Right, my name is Guido Appenzeller. I'm the CEO of Big Switch Networks. Instead of showing you a lot of marketing slides today, uh, our idea was to spend the vast majority of the time to actually give you a, a live demo of our products, talk about the products and talk about use cases, because I think, I hope, that's what you're interested in here. You may hear the noise in the background. We have the rack that actually is going to run the demo live here in the room. But um, before we jump uh, into products and demos, uh, what I wanted to do is actually spend a couple of minutes at the beginning just to share with you our perspective on, on SDN and sort of, you know, the, sort of the, the hype cycle that we've gone through um, over the, uh, over the past uh, couple, of, uh, couple of years. Here we go. So, you know, SDN personally started for me uh, back at Stanford in 2008. This was before the, the term SDN was even coined. You know, when we started experimenting with, at that time, still a research project called OpenFlow. Over the next couple of years, it was amazing to watch how SDN went from sort of being obscure technology to uh, you know, something that gained more and more momentum. You know, in 2010, it started to become cool. Some people in the networking industry started picking up on it. Uh, the ONF, Open Networking Foundation, was launched in, in 2011. And then I think that the hype really peaked last year in 2012 with the you know, $1.2 billion acquisition of Nisera. You know, the press at that point pretty much was you know, SDN solves all your problems. Uh, you know, everything works. Uh, that couldn't last, obviously, right? SDN is a great technology. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think at that time, <laughs> expectations were too high. And so, you know, in, in early this year, we started seeing the, you know, uh, sentiment turning a lot more negative, you know? Uh, doesn't bring world peace. You know, these are a couple of actual headlines, right? Most SDN today is, uh, is hype. Um, Can we get a copy of this slide, please? <laughs> very happy to send you one. <laughs> Um, you know, from our perspective uh, as, as a company, right, um, the interesting thing is if, if I look at that time frame, right, in terms of technology maturity, in terms of customer adoption, in terms of the size of the deployments, we've actually seen a fairly linear ramp, right, back at the time from Stanford until today. This peak here was a little bit unnatural, but I think where we are today is we're sort of approaching uh, a point where we're starting to understand what things work with SDN, what things don't work, right, uh, uh, where are we still figuring things out. So let's talk about SDN today, right? Over the past couple of years, I think we've learned a lot about SDN. We've learned how to build the technology, how to build the products, how to scale it, how to get it robust, uh, which things don't work. You know, we made a lot of mistakes, but we, we had a lot of learnings. I think where we are today as a company is, uh, at the end of the day, SDN is really about the use case and the application, right? It's, uh, we sometimes have customers that says, hey, I have an SDN budget, you know, sell me an SDN project. And the answer is like, look, I don't know what that is, right? Uh, we can solve specific problems w with a specific product. Some of the use cases and, and the associated products today work really well, right? And uh, with work well, I mean customers are buying them, they're deploying them, they're deploying them at scale, they're deploying them across many data centers. Uh, we at Big Search, we're coming, uh, you know, well, it's still not done yet, but, uh, you know, so far, Q3 has been a fantastic revenue quarter, our best quarter ever. You know, we're starting to see some very large customer deployments that we're very, very excited about. There's some other use cases, you know, where we haven't quite cracked the code yet, right? Where we built a solution, we tried it out, um, and, you know, we had to go, for some aspects of it, back to the drawing board, um, you know, to refine um, some of the aspects. So a good chunk of the rest of the, the day today will show you two of our products, one that works incredibly well today and is, is, is deployed at scale, and the other one, you know, where we're still in beta. As a backdrop to all of this, the core vision of SDN, right, has remained unchanged. And, uh, you know, most of you have probably seen this slide, you know, a couple of times before, but the, when we started Big Switch, our core idea was to say, networking is sort of the way how we're building networking equipment to us feels wrong and we're thinking it's in the process of transitioning, right? Classically, over the past 15 years, how you build networking equipment is you have proprietary silicon, proprietary system, you know, proprietary software, it comes in a box, few APIs sort of welded shut, right? If you compare this model with what we see on the server side, so for compute infrastructure, it's very different. Uh, you know, if I buy a server, I have choices. I can, I can pick what kind of CPU I want, what kind of uh, uh, system I want, what kind of uh, you know, software I want on top, what operating system or hypervisor. And these are not coupled to each other, right? And Intel doesn't force me 
to, to, to buy a Dell, right? which is very different from networking equipment. Right? If I buy a piece of networking hardware, you know, I buy an Arista switch and I want to run iOS on it, yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm out of luck, right? But, but why can't I do this? We can do this with servers, right? Why can't I do the same thing um, with switches? And I think this matters, right? The, the fact that we have in networking a vertically integrated stack, um, the net result of that is that it has seen a lot less innovation and has stayed much, much more manual than things have on the compute side. Uh, you know, this is a, a I promise it's the only Gartner slide I'm going to put up here. Um, but you know, Gartner uh, did a study and they yeah. said, how many, how many compute OS instances do we have per system administrator, right? And whether you believe the exact numbers or not, I mean, I think it's safe to say that with virtualization, we've seen a big ramp in the amount of compute infrastructure one person can control. We can automate it, we can script it, there's rich APIs, right? Uh, Guido, sorry, uh, yes. I have to go back on the previous slide. Sure. Where you said that nothing happened in the networking. Uh, we both know that there, that every single box out there has some sort of API that you could use to automate it, and we are not using it for a very simple reason. If you crash a, a VM, who cares? If you crash a server, eh, bad. If you crash a top of rack switch, you kill 50 servers. And at least in the enterprise environment, no one is willing to do that. So. It's, I think it's not fair to blame everyone else and the vendor and so on if we are just not willing to do something because we are scared that we'll kill our network. So I think that it's a fair point to say that you know, killing a top of rack switch affects the entire rack. Killing a server only affects the VMs on the server, right? That, that being said, I mean, first of all, the APIs on switches, you know, to, they're getting a little better today. But you know, if you go back a couple of years, actually, they're very primitive, right? I have SNMP, I have a okay. CLI. That, if I'm, if uh, I'm a software developer, that's not my favorite. How do you configure an Apache uh, server today with a VI config file? <laughs> I'm sorry, if I'm. How, how do you configure an Apache server today? You go into VI, you change the config file, or you use Chef or Puppet or whatever. So. The software on the servers that you talk about, how open it is, it's using the same things we are using. Text config files and text editing or Puppet or Chef or whatever. So for yes and no, right? I mean, the, the, the challenge is that today, if I have a large number of, of switches in, in, a, uh, in a data center, for example, right? As you pointed out, we don't have APIs that allow me to say, I want to, in a robust way, change some fraction of the traffic you know, on the switch, where I'm sort of firewalled off and I will not affect other parts of the system, right? And on a virtual machine, if I give you control over one VM, right, you can do anything that VM you want, right? And with a little, you know, and the other VMs at least are, are not immediately affected, right? There's, there's some fringe cases, but, uh, you know, we don't have that equivalent yet for networking. And I think that's what we're trying to get to here. Does that well, make you sense? See, if you talk to any web hosting company, yeah that runs multiple virtual hosts on the same Apache server, they'll tell you they have the same problem. And there are some people who have actually written software that allows Apache to sort of soft reload its configuration. So I, I don't want to rat hole here, right? I mean, I think <laughs> for the sure. Apache, I sort of see the model, right? I would argue virtual, server virtualization today is far ahead of network virtualization, right? If you think they're on the same level, you know, we should, we should take that offline, but I think I disagree. Well, Is I agree fair? with you, they're not on the same level. Okay, <laughs> let's start there then. <laughs> um, you know, the, the overall vision of what we're trying to achieve with SDN, uh, I think, hasn't changed. The, what has changed uh, uh, is how we're doing it, right? And um, I apologize for the term, SDN 1.0 versus 2.0 is very cheesy. Uh, I don't quite like it, but I think it sort of captures the, the, the basic idea, right? When, when we started selling SDN solutions, we typically call, t sold to what we call the 1% customers, right? The highly sophisticated organizations. These are people that have development teams, they love controller platforms, they want to build their own apps on top, right? Highly sophisticated, very interested in the technology. They like nuts and bolts, right? The, and um, the, our idea of how we would go to market was to say we, we work with a broad ecosystem of switch vendors. Um, <coughs> they implement SDN protocols, for example, OpenFlow on their switches, and then talk to our controller. And um, the part of the solutions we built, uh, you know, <coughs> usually where, where implemented is overlay networks between hypervisors. You know, the simple reason being, you know, a couple of years back, 
the, the flexibility you had on a switch in terms of SDN protocols to do interesting things was just very, very limited, right? If I can only control the TCAM with 2,000 entries, it's hard to build a data center scale solution, you know, using one of these hardware switches, as people here have pointed out, I believe, right? <laughs> so if you look at where we are today, right, a couple of things have changed. I mean, one thing is for, for some of the use cases, not for all, but for some of the use cases, we're now in the 99%. We're out of the early adopters. You know, we're talking to the people who are just deploying this because they want a, a simple working product. Right? Uh, they, have, they have different needs. They don't have dev teams, right? They don't want platforms with, where they can write Java code on top. They want something that out of the box works, right? right. It's, it's a different audience. Very different. You know, OpenFlow is still important, but open source has become a more and more important piece of the architecture. And very specifically, um, you may have seen we launched earlier this year a thing called SwitchLite, which is a lightweight, 100% open source switch operating system that runs on, on Broadcom switches, uh, you know, or on, on Linux as a hypervisor switch. You right? uh, can download from our web page. Um, it basically takes a, a, you know, a switch like the, like the switch we have in the rack here and turns them into a very lightweight SDN switch. Right? And you'll hear a lot more about that from, from Rob um, in a second. And you know, being able to put software on the switches has allowed us to innovate much, much faster. Right? And uh, because we're now able to, to leverage these switches more effectively, um, overlays, which before were a necessity, today are really uh, optional for us. Right? We, we still use our um, tunneling you know, where it makes sense. But uh, you know, in many other cases, we don't use tunneling anymore um, because we now can do things directly with the switching silicon. So for the rest of the talk, I wanna, we want to present you three things. The first one is SwitchLite that Rob is going to talk about, which is our switch operating system. Uh, the second piece is BigTap. It's a, it's a monitoring fabric. It works great, widely deployed at this point. And Big Virtual Switch, which is our network virtualization system.